for politics, for going in to defend Minister Farrakhan, not only by being on the defensive, but we're going on the offense to represent him, the nation of Islam, and our people. He's a beautiful man, an innocent man of all false charges that are being labeled on him by the satanic Jews and others who join them by calling him all of these names something that you call him the names that you say he himself represents and all he has done nothing but teach the truth and the actual facts i thank brother damon jones and black uh, westchester and the people before politics program for always opening the doors to the nation of islam and muhammad mosque number seven on behalf of the east coast region of the nation of islam we say to them thank you Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are listening to Black Westchester Presents, the People Before Politics radio show, every Sunday night, 6 to 8, on InTheMixRadio.com. I am A.J. Woodson, Black by popular demand. We have the man with the plan, Damon K. Jones. Yes, yes, yes. In the place to be. And we have the lovely Lorraine Lopez. Hey, hey, hey. And, of course, we have our guest, Damon, tell him who's here today. He is the East Coast representative of the Most Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Student Minister Hafiz Muhammad. Let's give him a round of applause. A friend of the show, my brother, for over 20 years. Yeah, we pulled up. We pulled up. I seen all the people here. I thought Farrakhan was in here for a minute. I was like, he is here. That's right. He is here. I was like, yo. Yes, sir. I am Farrakhan. That's right. I'm with Farrakhan. That's right. That's right. I'm here to defend Farrakhan. That's right. And represent. That's right. And that's Abdullah Feast Muhammad. Oh, I'm the Abdul, brother. I'm sorry, sir. Praise be to God. Oh, wait. Oh, doctor. Brother doctor. <laughs> Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. Well, Gotta get it right. Now, is, it, is it Doctor Reverend Doctor or Doctor? No, it's Minister Doctor. Minister Doctor. That's how you say it. But I like so to say minister. brother. No, no, I know him for so, so long. I, right, I like to throw the brother. Just so I have the right I'm terminology. Your brother, your brother, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, just so sir. I have I the right terminology you, when I write it. Minister Doctor. That's all right. That, there you go. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yo, we got a great show today. Um, we're gonna touch upon a variety of topics. Um, as you've seen. Recently in the press, um, black officials and celebrities have uh, been axed or been forced or whatever reason. Pumped been, out. Yeah, have been uh, to, um, what's the, how do you, what's the word? How do you put, to, to denounce. Denounce, that's the look word. Other, they've been asked to denounce the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Um, I've heard people, I've had various conversations with a lot of people. Unfortunately, just like we say about my running, my running politics, a lot of people in our community are misinformed and uninformed, and they don't, um, they don't go further to find out the whole story. They go by what they see and what they hear. Mm-hmm. You, you understand what I'm saying? And then, mm-hmm. and then they just jump with that, um, and they're being misfed information and force-fed. Lies. Lies. You know what I'm saying? And and then we run with that. And and then it's not new. And, you know, the biggest way the, 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 the enemy has, they, they get one of us to denounce another one. Like, I was like, I was watching a, the movie about Ali. And one of the things that <clears throat> disappointed me the most was when they had Jackie Robinson get up there. You know, all he represented as, you know, the first, you know, and all that. Oh, well, I don't know why he won't serve our country, this great country, and let, let us make all this money. Yo, I lost so much respect for him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That, yo, and, you know, he was only going by what they was telling him because yes, he really didn't know nothing about Ali, you know what I'm saying, or what he represented or nothing. He was going by what those people were telling him, and he f- just jumped up there and got in the camera, and, you know, and, th- and they do that all the time. They use one of us to try to bring down another one. So this is nothing new, and for, for it's a shame that we still fall for the same tricks um, that they've been doing since the beginning. You know, well, if you mean? don't stand for something, you fall well, for, for anything. Ab- absolutely, right. absolutely. And, absolutely. And, but the difference this time is the outpouring of defense from the members of the Nation of Islam, <coughs> but our brothers and sisters in the broader black community yes, sir. who love Minister Farrakhan have been benefited by him and their family members. Right. From the streets to the prison life to the highest level of the suites. 
they began to come out and defend, and there are others who have not. But that's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about all of that. Yes, sir. Now, now I want to I I start, like, all the time, <clears throat> since we said most people don't know, what was the comments, what was it that they're talking about that he allegedly said is the reason for to denounce him or this hateful No, brother speech? AJ, there is no comment. That's my answer. There is no comment. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has never said anything that is anti-Semitic, never said anything that is of <clears throat> hatred, never said anything that is homophobic, xenophobic, all of these labels that they want to call him, never said anything against the LGBTI community. There's an I right. added to it now. I, right. I got it in some recent training. Right. And he even mentioned that he has that in his own family at Savior's Day. Right. What is it that he has said? They need to say what it is. Right. See, that's the problem. Right, right, right. They don't want to say what you have an issue with because you would have to defend it. Right. Now, right. of all of the things they charge him, like they did with Jesus in his time 2,000 years ago, they do it today with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. One thing they have never called him is a liar. Right, right, right. <laughs> I, I, I used to write. I used to write for a magazine called Freedom Rag, um, back in the '90s, and I had did a series of articles on black leaders who came out making pro-black statements that were called anti everything else because it was pro-black. Mm -hmm. Khalid, Khalid, um, Khalid Muhammad was mm -hmm. one. Dr. Ben was another. I can't remember who the other two were, mm -hmm. but they had all been, you know, all this negative <laughs> attention. Be they were their comments were of a pro-black. Like, you can be pro-Jewish, and no one accuses you of being anti-anything else. Mm -hmm. But anytime you're pro-black, you're automatically, you're anti-Semitic, right. you're anti -Semitic or with, um, you're anti the flag, or you're anti-veteran. you got to be anti-something. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. only, only when you're pro-black. And it's not that we anti-anything. We're pro-black. We're speaking up for ourselves. And I, that's the problem. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, the white man is going down. He said that. What does he mean by that? He's talking about the wickedness of this people. Their foot being on the original and aboriginal people and even the poor whites of this country and this nation. He said, satanic Jews, you're going down. Look what he said. Satanic Jews. Right, right, right. Huh? Right. See, they're satanic Muslims. Satanic right. Christians, right, right, satanic right. nationalists, right, huh? Right, right. But he's, he's talking about what the Bible speaks of. They, those who say they are of the synagogue of Satan, huh? I mean, who say they are Jews, excuse me, right, but they right. are of the synagogue right. of Satan. Satanic right. Jews right, right. who are running things in the country. Right, right. Huh? Did Hugh Hefner run things? And when Hugh Hefner died, it's like a linchpin was pulled out in Hollywood. Everything came out about Mr. Weinstein. Was he part of the satanic Jews? Was he a good man with all he did to all of those women? Wow. And what he did to one of our beautiful black sisters? As well as the white women? Huh? Is Hugh Hefner a good Jew or satanic Jew? Is Larry Flint a good Jew or satanic Jew? Is Bob Guccione a good Jew or satanic Jew? Is the slum landlords in Westchester here, mm. good Jews or satanic Jews? Yeah. In Harlem and in Brooklyn and in Queens and in the Bronx and Staten Island? Huh? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Are the ones that be down on 28th Street and Park Avenue South looking for prostitutes, are they good Jews? Would you call me a good minister if I was out there hanging with the prostitutes <laughs> trying to be yeah. their John? That's right. I would not be a good minister. That's right. Right. And, and, and so we're saying that these are those who have inordinate power, Brother A.J. Yes, sir. They are the managers. They are the agents. And we're the servants. And I'll leave with this point. Our dear brother, Sister Lorraine, Floyd Money Mayweather, was told by Mr. Bob Arum when he wanted to make $100 million for a fight, he said, oh, no, you'll never be able to do that. You'll make maybe $30 million, $40 million, but $100 million, you can't do that. Why? Because you get the $100 million right, and right, you right. give us the $30. Right. What did Floyd Money Mayweather do just a few years ago, huh? Yeah. He held up a check for $100 million and he said, this is my money. Everyone has already been paid. This is what I got. He did it on his own. You know how he did it? He separated from Mr. Aram, and he did for himself. And Floyd Money Mayweather calls the shots and makes his own determinations. That's what we got to do as a people.
That's what they're upset about. They're upset about the truth that Minister Farrakhan speaks in his mouth and his uncovering of them. That's what the whole upset is all about. I got, Everything I got, else is I, distraction. I got it. I got it. We got a comment because <clears throat> the person, um, actually Sandy, Sandy mm -hmm. was like, um, Satanic Jews, you lost me here. And AJ saying, yes, that's right. My God, how many white people are miserable and greedy and this is targeting of Jews is unacceptable. And I want to I want to address that because I was getting ready to get into that. Understand there's good and bad in everything. When we talk about police brutality, and we talk about the police that are abusing and killing our brothers and sisters, we're not anti-police and saying all police are bad. We're talking about the bad police. You know what I'm saying? And there are good and bad black people. There are good and bad white people. Right now we are dealing with the bad satanic well, influence Jews. That does not mean we are attacking all Jewish people. Of course people. it doesn't mean And that. I just want them to be clear. Yeah, well, I just you know I want to say something too. We're addressing an issue or a statement that was hurled out at a black leader. And the history of the Nation of Islam and Minister Farrakhan and Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X um, the history of the nation Islam in the black community goes way, 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 way back. And we can see different, but when something is hurled and, a, and an accusation is hurled, accusations are hurled at me. People say I'm, I'm anti-police, right? But I'm not anti-police if I'm speaking for justice of people that have been killed, beaten, shot by police. And, and the same, same thing as Minister Farrakhan. I mean, I, I tell everybody, don't listen to a sound bite. Sit down and listen to a speech, the entire speech, because then you see he's not, he's not anti-Semitic because he criticizes Christians. He criticizes his own people. But nobody goes around saying he's anti-black. Nobody goes around saying that he's anti-black politician when he's critical, when he's critical on black politicians and critical on, on just being a man and handling our manhood so people don't say he's anti-man or anti-black man or anti-black woman yeah. when when he's critical on our actions uh, towards ourselves mm -hmm. and towards each other so i mean this this conversation is address is, is addressing mm -hmm. what was hurled at the minister that's right and, and 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 what was said and it was specifically and and sandy it was said it you know this started off by republicans Let's 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 get it where where it all came from. This this issue that we're dealing with right now in 2018 was started by Republicans, and then they forced the Democrats to, to, to denounce the minister. But these same Republicans, they haven't they haven't denounced Donald Trump mm. for grabbing women by the pee, right. right? Or or, yep. or calling um or calling other countries uh, uh scumbag countries Shit, or whatever shithole countries. Shit hole countries. Right, these are the same Republicans. So it's it's a level of hypocrisy here, also. Mm -hmm. And and I think is is as as free press because I consider us free press mm -hmm. and and a free radio. We got to tell both sides. We kids can't hear both sides. And and Minister Hop, Minister Hafiz being a be, being being my brother and and I've known him for over twenty years. I I had to have him come here and and, and address it on behalf of Minister Farrakhan. Thank you. Well, let me say this to the caller. You know, with all due respect, we respect the Jewish people. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was referring to him in message to the black man when he says, study the operations of the white man. He makes no excuses for his failures. See? He's successful in what he does or in his endeavors. He corrects his mistakes and moves on. He was speaking of the Jewish people. We don't have no disrespect of them. My, my, my mother, my friend, with all due respect, cleaned the floors for Jewish families in Canarsi, Brooklyn, over on Kings Highway and Remsen Avenue, Utica. She did that. There were good Jews and there were bad Jews. And when I was around, the bad ones tried to hide their stuff, but I knew what they did when I wasn't around. And the good ones who treated my mother very well, I salute them and thank them. There's good and bad in everything, but I'm saying to you, don't you defend them. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad through the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan have called out the synagogue of Satan. These satanic Jews that have this inordinate 
relationship with the black community. We put out two books, and I wish I had brought them. The secret relationship between blacks and Jews. Jewish scholars talking about their own people and their relativeness to calling us three-fifths of a human being. Their relativeness to the slave trade of which they said they had nothing to do with when they were the merchants, they were the shipholders, they were the ones who sold us. My former family name is a Jewish name. How did I get it if you were not the slave master and my children was not the slave? And we put out a second book because you hide under these names. Mm -hmm. The secret relations between blacks and Jews, how Jews gain control of the black American economy. They control the finances that flow through us. See, when Neo was in the matrix, he was off it. The blue pill or the red pill. We're telling you, you need to take the blue and the red book. You need both of them to understand this so we can level the playing field. So we want them to come out and accept the challenge from Minister Farrakhan and we with him to what we charge you with. He, Minister Farrakhan, and we with him are not anti-Semitic, but we charge you with being the satanic Jews, anti-black. Now, deny the charge and challenge us. We black people, get out of the way. Black leaders, get out of the way. Make them come out from the shadows and challenge the truth out of his mouth. And lastly, at Savior's Day, the minister put up the words of the Reverend Billy Graham and what he said in a conversation to former President Nixon about the stranglehold of the Jews and something has to be done, otherwise the country's going down the tubes. Yet when he died, they put him in the rotunda in the capital to lie at state. But this man understood what they were doing to the country. The satanic ones, the good ones speak for themselves. We have met the good ones who greeted the minister and others. I know Jewish people. They are satanic ones among us that our rise means their fall. Yes. Mm. And they're trying to hold on to their hegemony, and that can no longer exist. The black man and woman, mm. the aboriginal people of the earth, must go free. We must go free in the Caribbean, in Jamaica, in Trinidad, in Antigua. We must go free in Tobago. We got to go free in Cuba. Or do, or should we go into the history of the gangsters who were Jewish, who ran Cuba? And prostitution? They need to stop this. We have an inordinate relationship going on in 2018, and it must be bust up. Deal with the facts that we put out. Answer us. We're not hateful of no group, religious group, ethnic group. We just want our people to enjoy a full and complete freedom, justice applied equally to all, regardless to creed, class, or color. That's the Muslim program that's our program huh that you can find and we want equal equality equal membership among civilized people that's what we want for our people and for all human beings absolutely i just want to say and i've wow. said this i've said this to you and i know i've said this to damon before mm -hmm. i first became aware of minister farrakhan in an episode i think in the late 80s on the phil donahue show Mm -hmm. And it was one of those shows where it was just him and about four Jewish scholars. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to, you know, be an attack on him. And when I saw this black man who I didn't know, I saw first one or two, one a couple of things impressed me. He never raised his voice, first off. They was yelling and screaming and all that. And he never raised his voice. He dropped fact after fact after fact. And when 
got to a point where they could no longer argue with him when he started then quoting their Jewish scholars to them and saying, your scholars, such as a name in them and where it was and everything. And these learned men who were calling him, you know, were supposed to be attacking him and were supposed to show how educated they were, they were reduced to name calling and you're still a hate monger and, uh, and they were like, their whole character, they were supposed to be these educated men and this black man on this show never raised his voice. He talked even tone. He just dropped fact after fact. I was like, man, who is this dude here? That's like when I first became really aware of who he was. You know yes, what I'm sir. saying? And I was impressed. And he and the one thing I say about him, and um, he's one of the few people, and, and very few, not too many people have this. If you're on a, uh, if you're walking past and a radio comes on or a TV comes on, mm -hmm. his voice has the power to command attention. Whether you like him or not, you'll stop, even if it's temporarily, just to hear what it is he's talking about because of his voice. And and there's a few people that have that, but he has that, and I identified that that day. Like he had, because he, I was walking by us and I just heard his voice, and, you know, and I'm just I stopped and watched. He has that, you know, that gift. That's what it is, that gift. Um, Rich, you yeah. go ahead, Damon. Um, the Million Man March. Well, first, let me say this. Okay, yes, sir. Because, I mean, AJ went in, and I know you were going to deal with something, then AJ just went on. But I wanted to say, <laughs> Asalaam alaikum to you, Brother Damon. <laughs> and to you, Brother AJ, and Sister Lorraine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, and to you. the people before politics family, it's an honor to be back with you again. Right. It's been a little while, but I'm yes, honored sir. to be here yes, sir. with you on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the Nation of Islam, and Muhammad Moss, number seven, New York City, in the East Coast region. Yes, sir. Well, welcome, brother. And usually we yeah, have like a house. 10, 15 minute intro. AJ just jumped But it was just like, AJ, AJ, I knew. He just couldn't wait. I knew. <laughs> I knew that this was going to be a topic full show. I was like, yo, let's just get right into it. I was like, yo. So, welcome. I'm, thank you for taking your time to come through. Indeed. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yes, sir. Time to me, like I said, I've had a lot of money. I lost a lot of money. I spent, I'll have money again. But time is the one thing that I cannot seem to ever get back. So time is more important to me than money. So I like to thank people for taking their time. Thank and you. you are very busy with your new position. And to thank take you. your time to come That's through. That's right. Um, it definitely appreciate it. Now, you know, um, if you have comments, please leave your comments. We do not expect everybody to agree with the point of view today. But, um, you know, this is what we do. We're going to present all sides of everything. And we're going to present the side that you're not going to read in a lot of the mainstream media and you're not going to see and you're going to hear some of that tonight. How so. many, there, there's not, and, 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 and I said, and I said it before, you know, I, I, I personally challenge all the radio show hosts in New York um, to speak up because they know the history and, and allow Minister Hafiz on their show um, to speak in defense of the minister um, um, Charlemagne and 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 um, um, D. L. Hughley and Steve Steve Harvey, um, all your brothers that um, Ricky when, Smiley. Yeah, yeah, Rick Smiley. When when the heat is not on, you know they some of them have the minister on the show. So now that the heat is on, they need to bring the minister back. Those who had the minister on the show, or bring Minister Hafiz on the show. You know, because, you know, we have to we have to discuss this. I am I'm totally against anybody from outside of our community picking our leaders. They've been doing that hmm. for a long time, you know, and, and it's been times that I've been blackballed in Westchester County when nobody wants to deal with me. Uh, but all of a really? sudden. <laughs> but all no, of a sudden, I'm like sweet. the flavor of the month right uh, now. Yep. You know, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. It's when, so true. When we started, I like the flavor. I got all but the you know what? I, I don't get a big head over that because I know I stay with the truth. So tomorrow that might not be, but I don't care because I, you know, I pay for the show. Nobody, no, nobody else pays for the show. Me and AJ, we get the money for this show. So, so we can speak truth to power, and we can have whoever we want to have um, on, on our show. So, so we could we could do that, but I I challenge all the other all, all the other radio hosts, wh whether you're on the internet or whether you are you are on a major station, bring a representative. You if 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 you can't bring Minister Farrakhan on, bring a representative on and discuss this issue. This is a topic that needs to be discussed because of the rich history 
that the nation of Islam have in the black community, not just cleaning up black men, making all black women respectful, mm. building black families, economic development, ownership of, of, of real estate and businesses. It's a very, very um, schools intricate for our yes, schools for us children, intricate cornerstone in, in, in black history. Peace in the streets. That's, that's, yeah, peace in the streets. Youth Peace educational that's development right. programs. That's right, yes, sir. That's I, right. I, I just want to say, and manhood about, training. Yes. <laughs> talking about people attacking Damon when, when we first, you know, I was I was in Georgia, so there's some people that didn't know me. I came back 2014. You know, that's you know everybody heard that story before. So a lot of people warned me in the beginning. Oh, uh, um, and you're gonna be with who? Damon Jones. Um, uh, you might want to uh, watch the company you keep. Um, <laughs> you know, he, you might want to be careful. Um, part, I was like, yo, I've known Damon for years. That's my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you still like there. People warned me, and not only that, then there were people who will remain nameless who tried to elevate me and say, you know, this is for you. This is not for Black Westchester for Damon. This is for you. And the first thing I did is I called that brother, and he was like, nah, go ahead and rock that for for us and. The, the spot that didn't want him, he ended up being in that same spot the next day right after me. You know what I'm saying? So it was yes, just sir. like, you know, people have tried to, to, to that separation, and I refuse. You know, even when people big me up a lot, I'm like, nah, you know, I'm just one. It's, it's me and him. You know, let them know. You know, it's, it's, it's a partnership. I refuse to let anybody get between. But I was warned to not do this with David, like, <laughs> from people that just didn't know better. Because they, <laughs> really, they didn't really know my character. So, you know, um, Charles Stern did reply back he said sure AJ thank you you know I don't think we have a guest next week so let's say next week no well, next week is Easter I don't know if we have a show for Easter I don't know I don't know I don't know if anybody's scheduled <laughs> let me let me find out if the station's even open it's Easter but um but maybe the week he of, has a commitment the week in the week the week Easter. after Easter the first the eighth um right now Charles the eighth at 6 15 um let's say 6 15 April 8th um, you come up for a half an hour, and we'll we'll run through that, um, dealing with the whole, the board ethic thing and everything. Yeah. Um, shout shout to uh, Max Max Maxwell said, much love to the minister. I'm honored, sir. Mm. And um, Kevin Bunch said, listening, supporting my brethren. Mm. Uh, Jamie Pesson's on. Kevin Bunch is on. Derek L. White's on. DJ Nesto from Virginia is tuned in. Go ahead. Um, you mentioned earlier, brother minister. Um, uh, the Muslim program. Yes, sir. Can you explain to the listeners um, uh, what is the Muslim program? If the, for those who who don't know, uh, uh, can you explain to um, the listeners what is the Muslim program? The this Muslim is the program? question asked most frequently by both whites and blacks. The answer to this question, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, I shall state as simply as possible. Number one, we want freedom. We want a full and complete freedom. Number two, we want justice, equal justice under the law. We want justice applied equally to all, regardless of creed or class or color. Number three, we want equality of opportunity. We want equal membership in society with the best in civilized society. Now. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said on the Tim Russet show many years ago, where there were 50 million viewers, mm -hmm. if we cannot get one, two, and three, freedom, justice, and equality, then we want number four. Number four, we want our people in America whose parents or grandparents were descendants from slaves to be allowed to establish a separate state or territory of their own, either on this continent or elsewhere. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to provide such land and that area must be fertile and minerally rich. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to maintain and supply our needs in this separate state, I mean separate territory, for the next 20 to 25 years until we are able to produce and supply our own needs. And lastly, since we cannot get along with them in peace, and equality after giving them 400 years of our sweat and blood and receiving in return some of the worst treatment human beings have ever experienced. 
we believe our contributions to this land and the suffering forced upon us by white America justifies our demand for complete separation in a state or territory of our own. Mm -hmm. And I'll say number five, we want freedom for all the believers of Islam now held in federal prisons. We want freedom for all black men and women now under death sentence in innumerable prisons in the North as well as the South. We can go on, but that's our program. Yes, that's sir. the main part of the Muslim program. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we stand on that today. The minister gave a lecture entitled Separation or Death for the 22nd anniversary of the Main Man March that we hosted in Newark, New Jersey. And we can lay the case for separation. You look at how this country is dealing with the immigrants, some who sat in my office today after they came to the mosque meeting, you know, the meeting you missed. And they came to the mosque meeting <laughs> today. And uh, that was two weeks in a row you missed all that. And you tell mom I'm looking to see now still. And I sent you the invitation. And they sat in my office and they're getting ready to plan a march because of how the DACA has been reversed back. And now, mm. what happens now with black migrants and immigrants and our people from IAT, you know, these crap hole countries. See right. what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah, look at how we're being treated. Look at our brother in Sacramento, California, another innocent black man, yes, no weapon whatsoever, gunned down. But here's the white boy over in Parkland, Florida. You know how to apprehend him, and he's still alive, and others still alive. But unarmed black men and women keep getting gunned down, and they justify it, then do everything the minister said during 10, 10, 15, vilify us to justify yeah. your illegal actions, and then the unions come and then bankroll you and back you up so no one goes to prison. We can go on and on and on of our suffering here in America, and the minister asked the question, can we get justice under this present political construct? And if the answer is no, and it really is no, then we need to come to what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, an agonizing appraisal of our life here in America, and that we are qualified for self-governance. We have blacks that have served in every position of this country, even the highest office, down to the lowest, at one time where we didn't exist at all, and therefore we can govern ourselves. We can set up a ministry of trade and commerce, a ministry of justice, a ministry of science and technology, a ministry of health and human services, a ministry of information, a ministry of education, because our children need to be educated. That's absolutely Not trained, educated. See, we have a training going on today, which is why our children come out and they don't do for self. They look for a job from someone else. But when you got an education, Sister Lorraine, you do for self like any self-respecting people do. They go into business for themselves. What's the benefit of having the associate degree, the bachelor's degree, the master's degree, the mm. PhD degree? Is it a PhD? Are you a doctor? Or, do, or does PH mean power high and mm -hmm. deep, but you're not able to solve no problems mm -hmm. whatsoever? Is the bachelor or the BS degree BS? Or is it actually BS? <laughs> we got to determine that today. <laughs> Our people need to go free and breathe free. I respect LeBron James mm. because this black man has taken his wealth. He has taken his acumen. And even though that politician said, keep dribbling the ball. Right, well, right, I, right. I'd rather dribble the way he dribbles. Right. A man that will take his funds and pay for the education of the brothers in his community mm. to give them master's degrees, business degrees, then put them to work in his organization. That's what they was upset with LeBron about when he left Cleveland and went to Miami. Mm. He began to put blacks all around him running his operation. And, and, a man that had put up $41 million plus and other countless things that he's done that we know or don't know. They get upset when we do for self. They don't like Diddy talking about buying the Panthers or any team. They don't like yeah. Jay-Z yeah. being free and independent and when they talk about connecting it. This is what they didn't like about Biggie and Tupac. Tupac. Yeah, because so. Biggie and Tupac talked about having a union, Sister yeah. Lorraine, mm -hmm. Brother AJ and Brother Damon for the that's, rappers. That's right. They talked about uniting their enormous influence that they had around the world to benefit their own people in the hood. That makes you a dangerous black man because our rise means someone else's fault. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. And that was the dangerous thing with the, um, the Bloods and the Crips um, joining forces together.
and their, 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 you know, their, their truce because they weren't killing each other and they're a powerful army. You, you, you can't have that. That's, you, no. You I thank our Western Regional Minister, Please Student Minister down. Tony Muhammad, yes, for the sir. great work that he's doing and others in that community and the Bloods and the Crips. We thank the game. We thank Snoop Dogg and all of them for coming together, man, because these things have been orchestrated by members of law enforcement, rogue members that Minister Farrakhan talked about in 2015. Mm -hmm. There's rogue members here in New York City, in New York State, and around the country that have instigated these and fermented these realities that exist. And I guarantee you, if you look in Rikers Island where there's problems, there's instigation going on there mm -hmm. to exacerbate that, where a black man is preying on their own brother and we see them less than we see ourselves. That's right. And they don't see the brother there. He's trying to help you. He's trying to do what he can. She's trying to do what you can. Why attack them? And if there's any correction officers or law enforcement officials, if you mistreat someone, why would you do that? These are your brothers. They should be protected and your sisters. But I feel for those at Rikers. I feel and send a word out to my brother Elias Humsadeen, mm -hmm. the uh, president of yeah. COBRA. I feel for the officers, man. That's a very painful thing for, for them to be attacked like that. And I think that we can help out in that process if we are allowed to. You, you're absolutely right. And one of the problems, and I, I talked about this um, the other day with somebody, um, that the, the, the criminal justice reformers, those who uh, wanted to close Rikers, and, and I always felt it was a sham. Mm hmm because Rikers is prime property, it's prime real estate. Yes. And the politicians allowed the, the reformers to move their agenda, thinking that they were doing something good. Mm -hmm. Because now the prisons are going to go into the, into the black communities. They're going to move the prisons. So you haven't changed anything. You just move the faulty system. You haven't, you haven't changed how the prison operates. You haven't changed policies. You just move to where they're going, and then they take Rikers Island and either make them condos, million-dollar condos, right. or extend LaGuardia. So, of the, which we ain't getting no money from the, the contracts. Thank you. Absolutely. But the unions, especially the black union presidents, they need to sit down with the reformers. Mm -hmm. But they don't talk to each other. Right. And, 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 that's, and that's part of the problem. Yeah. You know, my organization, we sit down with the reformers. We let, well, you can't do that because guess what? What's going to happen is de Blasio took away keep lock. So if an inmate does anything wrong, there's no punishment for his action. Yes, so sir. now you don't lost control of the facility. Yes, sir. So now nobody's safe. The correction officer's not safe, and civilians are not safe, and even other inmates are not safe because there's no communication. It has to be, it has to be some communication with, with, with those that are in law enforcement and, and, and the community that they serve. Well, you know, <laughs> solitary confinement not handled properly as an inhuman Ab treatment. Absolutely, absolutely. But when someone is out of control, they must be confined. Absolutely. So we understand that. Absolutely. absolutely. And so we absolutely. don't want the correction officers to continue to be maimed and hurt and put near death for them doing their jobs. And neither do we want any of them to mistreat the prisoners. Absolutely. If that ever has happened, but we don't want the prisoners to continue not to see their brothers. They should allow us to come and teach them the knowledge of themselves, the knowledge of God, so that they can know who they're looking at much better and look at themselves better and accept responsibility for their condition. Some of it is contrived. Some of it they put themselves in. But you can get yourself out of it without you harming or hurting your fellow brother or sister who's just there to help you get through a tough time. That's right. We pray for the correction officers. Wherever they may be in New York and in the state of Westchester, man, it's not an easy job to be able to do that. It's not a babysitting job. It's not a job where you're there to deal with mental issues. That Absolutely. also is not being addressed. No, it's not people. because of the fact that mo the majority of the population, these brothers and sisters, have mental issues. And I know in Westchester, I can only speak Westchester. I don't know. Rikers, but I know majority of correction officers in New York State, we do have training in dealing with mentally ill. Police officers don't because we got to deal with them every day. We get more training each year on dealing with the mentally ill instead of 
putting them in the proper place, in the proper housing. But what did the Wait, psychiatrist maybe. go to school for? I don't what know. What did the psychologist you, you know what I'm saying? I don't know because what they got them degrees. So everybody wants a degree and a letter next to their name, but ain't doing no work that earns that. You absolutely right. You 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 absolutely right. And and you have Cuomo, which under uh, un, under his watch, he he closed most of the psychiatric hospitals in New York. So so now they're they're in the the jail facilities, and that's not really talked about. You know that we got to talk about that because a lot of these people, a lot of these people that's locked up, they need help, mm -hmm. and they're not getting the help sitting in the jail because because the prison system wasn't designed for the mentally ill. No, sir. It wasn't designed for the mentally ill, and that has to be a discussion. And that's why the union officials need to talk to the reformers when they need to sit down, and it could be worked. And and I'm I'm telling you, it could come to we could come to pass where we could make. The jail safe for everybody, but it has to be conversation mm -hmm. because the politics are you. The politicians are using both. Yeah, but yeah, what's making the both. mentally ill mentally ill? We got to get to that. To the system. <laughs> that's you that's get to the, what I'm saying? That's what, right. That's what right. conditions is life? Right. Is turning their minds like that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. That's I a whole to, nother show. I want to piggyback. I want to let you go on, but we I don't deal with pigs, brother. I want to allow that. I want to. I want to scroll back. I want to scroll back. Right, AJ, come on. To, to um, to um, we saw about Le when you saw about LeBron James. One mm. of the things that I think gets overseen, you know, because they talk to call him the king and all these numbers and championships. Yo, LeBron James is one of the few good examples. He came. He brought his homeboys with him. He's never. He, you know, everything they said he couldn't do, you see them work on the off season and get better at it. And he don't have no baby mama drama. He ain't got no rape charges. He ain't got no criminal, you know, drug charges. Like, he, you don't hear none of that kind of scandal with him. And he just has been working in a state of excellence and he's been empowering his people and using his voice while there's been people that are complaining. On social justice. Right, right. He mm -hmm. hasn't. Mm -hmm. People that's complaining, he wasn't doing enough of it. You know, I mean, you know, you got to do it at whatever level you're comfortable doing it. But. He has used key points like the opening segment of the ESPYs Awards. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a mm -hmm. big, huge stage. Of course. And, 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 and you know, even with the, the Trayvon Martin, he started that whole thing with the hood. I am Trayvon. I got the whole team to do it. Like, just the image of that without mm -hmm. no words. People don't give him the credit for that. And then the other thing you mentioned, you also mentioned Snoop. Snoop has a gospel album out now and was eligible for a Stella Awards. That's the gospel awards. And people don't, a lot of people don't even know this is out there. Snoop is on Minister Farrakhan's new no. album. Yeah, right, right, I know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't even know his gospel album is out there. And one thing we as a people, we miss the message because we look at the messenger sometimes. Like, you know, we've all changed. If you look at some of my past, if you look back four or five years, you wouldn't expect me to be doing what I'm doing now. Like, you know, my, the first year I was doing this, I was talking to my cousin. I was telling him about all the things we were doing. He was like, man, I was... I was waiting for you to finish. I was saying, now put my real cousin back on. Because he ain't never seen me do none of this. You know what I'm saying? That like this, we evolve and we change and we mature and we get into things. And, yo, why can't he mature? You, you understand what I'm saying? We want to keep him back to the gin and juice days and, you know, that's all they want to know about him. Yes. But he has a gospel album out. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That, that's doing very well. You know? And, you know, and he's, and he's, and he's um, one of the songs I seen he was with, uh, Forgot the artist, but it's a big name artist, mm -hmm. big name gospel artist who's respected that did the song with him. And I was like, you know, we have to we have to look at these, and you know, sometimes it'll just be a brief message, and that's all it's supposed to be, and then not their whole life. But we need to listen to the message, and Indeed. you know, what I'm saying, um, and my sister um, Lorraine want to say something. I'm sorry, I I have a bunch of day laborers that are hungry because they haven't been out because they're afraid of immigration, and I'm on my way to go feed them. So I just want to say it's an honor to meet you, and it's I'm an sorry. It's an honor to meet you, Lorraine. Take care. That's all right. You take care of them and feed them. Yes, sir. And yes, Jesus sir, I And Jesus says, will. if you've not done it unto the least of these, you've also not done but it to, unto, unto me. me. Okay. So keep up your good work. Thank you. Thank all right, you. sis. And, and on her way out the door, on her way out the door, I just want to big her up for yes. a lot of the work that she does. Like, you know, a lot of people don't know what she do behind the scenes for a lot Please. of people with no uh, with no accolades you no know, she'll make them calls she somebody some family's hungry a family and that's she how it should be we not you know, should, we should not do but, things to be seen of men and women right you know right. and mm -hmm. and you know she used to be she was the first Latin, hispanic i think the first hispanic um 
City Councilwoman and Yonkers. All right. And what I always say this about all politicians and to the voters, look at the people who are serving without their title. They're continuing to serve. Those are the people that you want. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, some, everybody do whatever when they have a title. But when the people continue to serve, and she's doing more now than she was then, you know, and she she does a lot. So I just want to give her her props. Indeed. Because she, you know, she gets a lot of... Pleasure meeting her today. Yeah, she gets, there's a lot of negative stuff they want to bring up. We all got to pass. You know what I'm saying? But what are you doing now? So, yeah. you know. Brother, brother minister. Yes, sir. The historic Million Man March. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, because um, of yesterday... Um, the march that they had against gun violence. Yes, yes. You know, and yes, sir. a lot of people. I was I was watching the news. I was skimming through the news. Mm-hmm. You know, and and the Million Man March got some mention. You know, because they was talking about historic marches, and 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 they brought up the Million Man March. Um, since the Million Man March, what have you seen in the black community? Do we need to revisit? Um, because now you hear you you see, you know the Me Too movement. You see, um, what they call the youth movement. I, I I have a few issues with what they're calling the youth movement because black youth have been marching for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, we see the different movements, but we still the but the black man is still struggling throughout the United States. Yes. Um, what is your take on? Well, first, it was good to see the march that took place at the nation's capital against gun laws. But the enemy, the open enemy, is prepared for that. They don't mind us throwing temper tantrums. At the end of the day, they still control the policy and the Mm -hmm. decision making Mm -hmm. that the AR-15 still exists, even in Parkland, Florida. They spent hundreds of millions of dollars but had nothing to do with stopping the sale of the AR-15 rifle and the bullets that go along with them. So they don't mind this expression. Go ahead on and do it. Play your music. We'll secure you. You got it. But we're still in the legislature. We're still in control to have our guns the way we want to have them and have the NRA support us the way that they do. It doesn't mean it can't change it. But what are we going to do when they don't change it? Because that's what's happening right now. The Me Too movement and the movement of women has always been a time for women. Mm-hmm. We should never have a moment where women don't thrive. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says of the woman that the home is your base, but it's not your only place. It's your launching pad to spring forward and to subdue the world because children come through you. As a matter of fact, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the eternal leader of the Nation of Islam, said when you teach a man, you teach an individual. But when you teach a woman, you teach a nation because nations come through and from the woman. So it's always been their time. And they should not be harassed. They should not be mistreated. But we also say from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, where there are no decent women, they can and will be no decent men. That's right. What is a strip club with no strippers? If you ain't got no strippers, (laughs) you ain't nobody to make it rain. It's no club at all. That's That's eventually what I want to see. I'm tired of seeing women being objectified like that, and I'm tired of seeing women disrespected in the workplace, no matter their ethnicity. They should all be respected for what they bring to the cause. So women should move forward. Women should become more involved in politics, but don't be a woman coming forward, then act like the men who have ruined us. See? you got to come with that nurturing uh, ability that God has given you. You have to come with that ability of consolation to help solve the problems of today but the enemy is trying to turn the young girls and turn the youth movement so I'm saying that you know these are all good since the million man march everybody's called for a million or something and whether they got it or not at least they strove for it but the million man march we don't need another one of those what we need Minister Farrakhan said is to organize of the success of that we had the million man march in 1995 the Million Family March in 2000, the Millions More Movement in 2005, and then Justice or Else in 2015. So we just need to organize on the truth and the principles Mm -hmm. that have been given. Much success to the Women's March, to my sister Tamika Mallory and Carmen Perez and Linda Sansor and other members that make up that group. And 
to the Me Too movement. Yes, well, us too. We need a us too movement. Mm. Because what happens is blacks and aboriginals get lost in these movements. And we are then marginalized, but we are absorbed into the fabric. See, they don't come out. No one was going with the me with, 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 with the march on guns yes, when blacks were killing each other in an ordinate rate in New York, in Chicago, in Arkansas, in D.C., in Memphis, Tennessee, in Washington, D.C., in Atlanta. Each time the murder capital kept changing in the country. Where was the movement for guns then? Was yes, it because right. Negroes was killing themselves? That's right. But now that you keep seeing these mass shootings take place with these mass weapons that are for war zones, and if you need an AR-15 in America now, then you need to assess the democracy in America that why do you need an assault rifle that can kill people in a moment's notice like that? I thought the Constitution said that where there's no pardon me, established militia, you have a right to bear arms. But the last time I checked in America, they have established militias. That's right. They have police departments. Mm -hmm. They have the DEA. Huh? They have the ATF. Mm -hmm. They have the FBI. Huh? Mm -hmm. Police departments in every state and town of this country. So why do we need all of the guns? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as his national representative forbade his followers to keep weapons in their homes. Unless you were law enforcement, if you were, lock it away. Mm -hmm. But if you were not, you didn't need a weapon in your home because that's the first thing we go to to solve problems. And in the hood is what mm -hmm. we've been using by design mm -hmm. and desire to kill one another, harm one another, rob one another, maim one another, but with no gun, David. Right. See, I got an issue you didn't come up the last two weeks too long. <laughs> <laughs> so if I had a gun, see, you never know what I might do to you. But with no gun. I got to come to you with the principles of atonement yes, that you wronged me, brother. You see what I'm saying? AJ, what you hey, laughing hey, at? I, I, you need to show up. I got some. what I'm trying look, to say. I got something right for you in the car today, brother. Uh, I'm going to tell oh, you Oh, you're right. trying to make up for it. I understand. <laughs> but you understand my principle. Absolutely. With no weapon, right. it forces me to use my knowledge. Absolutely. With no weapon, it forces me to use wisdom, Absolutely. which is the skillful use of knowledge in an intelligent way. Absolutely. It forces me to understand you and you understand me yes, and use the principles of atonement that Minister Farrakhan gave in 1995, which is point out the wrong or fault, acknowledge it, confess it, repent. Yes, number sir. four, number five, atonement or at one minute, do something to correct the wrong, which gives birth to number six, which is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And when you forgive, you forget, meaning you don't remind the person right. that what you forgave them for, which gives birth to number seven, reconciliation, and number eight, a perfect union, which allows us to develop a conflict resolution model of which Minister Farrakhan instructed his followers and helpers and ministers to set up conflict resolution centers. Absolutely. So you can come to Muhammad Mosque number 7 in Harlem. You can come to my mosque, Muhammad Mosque number 7C in Brooklyn. You can go up the road into Bridgeport, Connecticut. You can go up the road in Springfield, Massachusetts, Hartford, Connecticut. You can go down the road in Newark, New Jersey. You can go to Trenton. You can go to Plainfield. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. You can go to New Brunswick. You can go all the way up into Canada. And we will use our meeting spaces as conflict resolution centers. Though I want to set one up dedicated for that. Right. However, that's our work. We need yes, one sir. of those in Mount Vernon. But, um, Indeed. <laughs> Tell me we give us a building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we make it happen. But um, no, I, we'll, I want to I I circle back when you were talking about um, they weren't complaining when we had all the guns in the black community. Mm -hmm. That's because they was situation like the Contras, they were providing those guns. Of course. They were Absolutely. dumping those guns Absolutely. in the black community for us to sell and kill each other. And, and you know what I'm saying? They, that's, they, were, they were dumping it to, to, to fund their, their unsanctioned wars and all other kind of nonsense. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, of course they wasn't complaining about it. Well, the American mm -hmm. youth should be fed up because they're being killed in mass numbers on these uh, school campuses. Yes. And then here's President Trump saying, let's arm the teachers. Yeah. Minister Farrakhan said, that's wrong, President Trump. The teachers come there to teach. They don't need a side-on weapon. Can you imagine white teachers in America having arms with black children in the schools and Hispanic <laughs> children in the schools? The officers are already killing us wholesale who have no weapons at all. Right. And the first thing, oh, man, what? What would you say? You'd be busting a cap in us. 
and justifying it. That's right. No, we can't have that. And you might do it to other children. No, you don't. Teachers don't need weapons. Not, not it's only bad that, enough that the law enforcement got weapons. Right. Not, not only that, though, you you start seeing black teachers getting killed by the cops. Oh, they, he had a gun. About to pull it out. You know. Yes. So they killing us without guns. Yes. So they, we don't need. We don't need no, more of that. No, black law enforcement ain't even safe. <laughs> yeah. We get shot. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> but, but I appreciate the young little <laughs> sister that spoke. I watched on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, I forget her name, but she spoke about all of those who could right. not speak for themselves. That's right. Who right. died other than just at mass shootings. Right. right. So I appreciate that. But they, you know sister. what was unique? Um, one of the, the students, one of the main students, and a couple of the Hispanic and the white students were complaining that the media didn't give uh, the black students the same light as, as they were giving uh, the students of a lighter shade, whether they were Hispanic or whether they were white. And um, the, main, the main young male student that has been all over, all over the media, he forced him and he had a press conference with a lot of black kids behind. They only spoke to him, you know, so they... So they had to maneuver him to talk about young black children being shot, shot and killed and, and the issues of gun violence in the black community for the press to even address the issues. What did Michael Jackson say? <laughs> Absolutely. They don't love us. That's right. What did Kanye say? Mm -hmm. They don't care about us. Mm -hmm. Why is this being said and we don't pay attention? It's real. Right, right. This is not conspiracy theory. This is reality life, not reality shows. Right. Mm -hmm. They show us that they don't care. So what does that mean? We got to care about ourselves enough that we got a deal in the black community. See? I don't want to hear another killing by us, us killing each other. Right. Absolutely. But if it is, I'm coming to rally wherever it is about us killing us. Right. right. I'm right. not here just to stand up against Rampant police brutality and right, mob attacks absolutely. and misconduct. I'm here against what's even greater, us killing ourselves at a preponderant level. Seems like things have slowed down, but it still don't make up for the loss of black life no. that we've done to ourselves. They did. They they um, they 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 had a project. I don't know if you were aware of it in Mount Vernon. They um they got um, 41 um, parcels. Some of them were drug. I mean um gang members. Opposing gang members, and they got 41 youth from the city of Mount Vernon, and they made an album, The Peace Project. And it was about, you know, pray for our city and stop killing and all of that other stuff. And while they were recording this project, like there was a, a bunch of senseless street shootings. There was no violence during this time. You had former gang members or opposing gang members on, on the track together. And this is, they pushed forward. And they brought this to a couple of adults, and the adults helped them do what was necessary to get. It, it was a shame that I bring it up. We've had them on the show and everything. That that project wasn't spoke about more and promoted more. And I mean, it was it was a very it was very good musically. Mm -hmm. They were very talented. It was very good. Their performance was excellent. But you know, you don't hear about that. And that was something that the youth was calling for. You know, because they're the ones being killed, and they're the ones. They seen their brothers and sisters killed every day, and that was a powerful project. And um, it's online. It's the Peace mm -hmm. Project, yes, right. sir. The Four Square Peace Project. If you have not heard that, look that up. You know, watch the video. If you can buy a copy of the CD, support that, so we can have more of that. We have to. We have to. We have to empower our youth who are trying, because we complain that they're out of control and all this other stuff, but we don't support this. Well, you know what I'm saying. And then we have politicians trying well, to co-opt it and put their name on it and everything, right. and they had nothing to do with it. You right, know what but, I'm saying? So. but I say it every day, you know, until the adults stop acting like gangs, we will never solve the gang problem. And in, in the black community, we, we act like gangs ourselves. We, mm -hmm. we hate on each other. And this is adults. I mean, uh, you know, the political yes, sir. beef, that's, that's, that's a different form of gang banging. It, it, it's no different. It, 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 that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's gangsters, man. That's, that's right. right. That's right. Brooklyn politicians, Harlem politicians, <laughs> Queens politicians, more or less coming up in the money, earning Mount Vernon. <laughs> Come on, it's gangsters, man. It's cutthroat. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. You owe me this. 
this one owes you that, and if that's you don't it. do this, then I'm going to do this to you. Yeah, that's that's gangsterism. I mean, I got this on you, so you better do this over to me, or you're going to be exposed. That's gangsterism. I mean, even with the climate that's going on here right now, I don't know what's true or what's not true in Mount Vernon. Right. But the bottom line is, something is going on. Then you right. got arrested. Something is something happening. Is happening. <laughs> something is happening that should be, shouldn't be happening. Right. You know, now I've seen your post of the police commissioner. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I've seen y'all speaking out against this gentleman. And the, AG, and the AG just brought him up in yeah. his press conference. The AG brought him up in the press conference. Mm. You know, Indeed. He said, he said, you know, and in return for paying all these things, this individual, he didn't name him, but individual was given a high-ranking job in law enforcement who had no law enforcement experience. And then said, hold up, that bears to be repeated again. Repeated it again and then said, but uh, this case will give him some law enforcement experience now. You know, so it was well, like, if Mayor Thomas is innocent of the charges, then we expect him to fight them vigorously and prove yes. his innocence. Yes. And if he's guilty and one knows they're guilty, whether it's him or anyone else, then just own up to it and don't waste time and waste the, the people's time. Just own up to our reality. So I don't know what the case is. Right. But if he's innocent, fight for yourself. And if you're guilty, don't put the people through something that's unnecessary in the end to only still be discovered and uncovered. For what could have been done better, or in in, in well, a better manner. Well, the brother got problems because the board of ethics released another report that he took another hundred thousand dollars. Yes, sir. And, I, and that's and that's what I invited to. Uh, um, yeah, Charles Stern. Uh, his his uh, wife Deborah just confirmed good. she will be here April eighth at six fifteen to talk about that situation where right. Amani was supposed to wear the board of ethics charges. Right. She's speaking from the school's... Charter school game. Right. Yeah. May 100,000. Well, a charge is a charge. Right, right, right. right. And charges have to be proven. Right. Yes. That's what they're oh, saying. We, we want to give him the respect of that like we would do anyone else. Yes. And we're innocent so. until proven guilty. Yes. Yeah, All sure. I'm saying from a spiritual point of view... Yes, sir. If we're guilty of something and we know it, own up to it. Don't waste the taxpayer's money. <laughs> You understand? It take us through an arduous process only to still be uncovered. Well, right. some people, you know. And you know, if we're innocent, then fight for it and prove it. But you know what? There's some people who are in denial of their actions, even if you even if you have the evidence on them. Hmm. You know, there's some people like that. I'm not saying he's like that. I'm just saying there, there, there's some people like that, that even though you have the evidence. Well, have you ever heard the story of... The truth and the lie right. That's right. took a swim together. <laughs> right. And in order to do it, they had to disrobe That's right. some of their clothing. And the lie decided to leave the water before the truth. But when he put on clothes, he put on truth clothes. clothes. That's right. And, of mm -hmm. course, the, the, the truth realized that the lie was dressed in his clothes. So the truth jumped up out of the water, and here was the naked truth. Chasing a well-dressed lie. lie. That's right. <laughs> you see, so the lie knows that he's a liar. Right. You know, and right. that's and, and and we're in the business of exposing the lie and the liar. Yes, that's, that's right. what Minister Farrakhan yes. has been doing, yes. exposing a lie about our people and the liar who's put it out. Right. right. So that's that's what we've been trying to do with Black Westchester. Well, that's what and we a lot of do people, all the way and around. A lot of people don't. They they they. they they're comfortable with the lie. They're, they're comfortable living in the matrix. They don't mm -hmm. want to be pulled out of the matrix. They're comfortable living like that. You know what I'm saying? They know it is. They know it is. And then you got, you know, I say, I say this too. I, I gave the scenario. I, I left New York around 2002. I came back to Mount Vernon 2014. Mm -hmm. I said it was, and Mount Vernon was starting to go down a little bit, go down a little bit. I said it's the equivalent of your you know, having a child, right? You have a, a young child mm -hmm. that you see grows a little bit every day. But because you're there, you don't actually see the growth as much as that relative who hasn't seen them in like six months or six years. Like, wow, you got big because you've only seen from here to here. Well, leaving Mount Vernon and coming back has given me that, you know, to look from here to here mm -hmm. where so many people that have been in it have just gradually just become to accept it and they don't even realize that it's going down. And as the quote, um, Andre Wallace, it's been long. It's been wrong for so long now. It just seems <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's just like, you know, it, that's a, a lot of people are comfortable in the situation. You know what I'm saying? And yes, sir. You know well, they don't want to do, and they don't want to do what. Like nobody's going to give you nothing. We got in this world. None of our freedoms were given to us because it was the right thing to do. 
uh, because the other side was just nice. You, you understand what I'm saying? We had to fight for well, the, the things that we had. Yeah, One way yeah. or another, you had to fight for them. We say freedom is not free. So there's, you're not going to just going to march or just talk and they're just going to give you what you... you, you well, there's you, freedom and there's the illusion of freedom. Well, yes. No, there's the yeah. durable lifestyle that many of us live, mm -hmm. thinking we're free because the cage is moving. Right. right. You understand? That's why right, we say we want a full right. and complete freedom right right but when you know i mean when you when you look at mount vernon and you look at we have a black mayor majority black city council black board of ed mm -hmm. right black school superintendent I black, mean, all the way through black school superintendent yeah, I mean. um for on, on the state level black right mm -hmm. everything's black from all the way down right one of the only cities that i i would see in westchester that the minister will come to in all levels of government yes uh, you understand? We'll come out. Yes, sir. And you don't hear anything, right? It's a normal day, right? <laughs> but but we can't we can't get it together, right? We we can't like last last week I said we we are we are Westchester's Wakanda, but we are selling off our our vibranium. Mm -hmm. We're like our elected officials, our leaders, uh, our leaders are because yeah. because we got the best piece of land in Westchester County. Yes, sir. You know, and and we're not using it to the benefit. Or well, the leadership is not using it to the benefit it's of the people. It's because of greed and inordinate self-interest. Mm -hmm. Minister Farrakhan talks about that in his illuminating book, A Torch Light for America. Mm -hmm. Greed and inordinate self-interest that we've learned from others that have went before us. And right. we've developed ourselves because we believe in rugged individualism, yet we talk about group politics. Right. And it's really not about the group. Right. Until we're forced for it to be about the group. Right. Or either we're uncovered, and then due to corruption or parents of corruption, we then have to leave office. I, you know, I notice it's, it's like I, I equate, I've been in the music business for years, I equate a lot of things to the music business. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, certain people came up and they were artists and the label that they were on jerked them and their manager jerked them. And you know what I'm saying? And they, they, they went through, then they now became the manager or the label, and then they started jerking. You know, the brothers and yes. sisters that look like them. And they worse than what the white person was doing to them. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how they learned. You know what I'm saying? So now they, you know, that's, that's what they do. Well, my and father. Same thing with our black politicians. You know, when they yeah. get to. Well, when I didn't learn my mathematics as a young boy, mm -hmm. my father being from Charleston, South Carolina, he would take the ball peanut of a hammer and hit my knuckles. Okay. So they were bruised sometimes until they bled. Okay. Saying to me. You can learn this division. You can learn this multiplication. You can learn this next level of math. Don't tell me what you can't do. Right. So I'm going to make you feel the pain until you get it. That was his way. Well, that was a little crude, brother. Right. But I've raised five children. Mm -hmm. I did not hit their knuckles like my father did mine. Right. He made me sit in the corner and face the wall for hours. I used to get beat with a switch off a tree. Well, I got that too. A tree branch. <laughs> I got that Yay, too. Yay, the tree that. trunk. Yes, sir. I've gotten beaten with an extension cord. I ran when they were going to hit me with the female part. I said, oh, heck no, I'm not getting no chunks of flesh missing <laughs> out of my body. But all of that happened, but because it did, for me, I was not going to pass that on to my that children. Right, I thank God. So I right. understand the you know learned uh, complexes but we gotta do what the scripture says it says that the sins of the fathers in the book of exodus will be uh, will be passed down to the third and fourth generation of their children right but the book of ezekiel says the sins of the fathers will no longer be that of the children the children have to accept their own so you can't keep saying that i haven't been a good daddy or good father because i didn't have a daddy right i ain't been a good mother huh because i didn't have a mama no you got to learn because I didn't have, this is what I have to give to my own. Right. So we got to think better of ourselves right. and better of the situation and persons and person that we're dealing with. Right. And then we can change those dynamics. So they should have learned by what was done to them by others that I shouldn't do the same to someone else. It becomes a complex that we begin right, right. involved. If I've been done wrong, then why not you? Right. No, we got to break those cycles. Right. You know, We have a duty to do that. Well, you know, I mean, when when do when do black leadership share some of the responsibility? Oh, leadership shares it all. Yes, sir. 
Leadership shares it all. It starts from the top down. Mm -hmm. If there's a problem going on in the body, there's something in the head. They call it psychosomatic illness. See? It's the mind making the body ill. Sometimes the leadership makes the people sick mm -hmm. because of our egos, mm -hmm. because of our insecurities, because of our immaturity, because of our immature expression of a word or a message. We make the people ill or sick because they don't know no better. Mm -hmm. Then when they learn, man, this is wrong, they too are ill-affected and they have been going about ill-affecting other people until we come back and reset everything. Apologize for the wrong we've done. Make amends for those wrongs and then reset it properly. Then leadership can go back out and be honored for leadership. We're only in positions of leadership to serve people. Absolutely. Jesus says, I came in the world to minister on, not to be ministered to. That's right. So any man that would be your minister or woman would be your minister is your servant. This is what I love about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He serves me. He serves my soul. He serves our family. He serves the needs of our people. He doesn't come for us to serve him. One day someone was helping him with something, and he said, Oh, brother, I wish that you would do the same for me, for your people in your city. Otherwise, what you're doing for me is vanity for others if you mm. won't do it for them. Yes, sir. You understand? That, yes, sir. That, that, that That's was, what a leadership leader is supposed to do. Yeah, that, that was the lesson that... And one of the parables where Jesus was trying to teach the of disciples course. were washing their feet. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They didn't get. They didn't get. They weren't getting it. Yes. that that was the whole. You know. Of course, yeah, brother. Yeah. You gotta help others. So leadership, no matter what, is spiritual or political. Help the needs of the people. What can I do to make life better for you? Right. I said something at the end of the mosque meeting today after our mantra. I said to the people, if there's anything that we can do to make life better for you today. And it's within our ability to do so. All you got to do is ask. I don't have the ability to solve everybody's problem or every issue. That's right. But if it's within our ability, we want to or direct you where we can. That's being a servant. Yes. yes. Sir. Rather than wanting the people to do this for you and do this for me, do you know who I am? Mm -hmm. If you have to say you the boss, then you ain't the boss. Yeah. <laughs> if I you got to say, say you in charge, always, then you ain't in charge. That's right. I always say a that. mark of a good leader is when you walk into the room and you change the dynamics of the room and what you see that needs to be put in order, not one who comes in and points, do this, do this, do that, do that. You go and do it and become the agent of change yourself. Mm -hmm. Then others will follow what you've done even when you haven't said a word. They will follow your actions. That's right. That's right. So that's, that's what right. leadership has to do. Couple things can be set right. A couple of new people tuned in. Maureen Walker, uh, Simone Combs, Larry Johnson, Simone English Bowden, um, John R. Jones, Ronnell Spence. That's DJ Cranberry. He's going to uh, be on the hey, show before. Hey, what's up, brother? DJ Cranberry. What's um, happening? Eric P. Williams and brother Kenneth Chamberlain Jr. are all on the check-in right now. Brother Greetings Ken. to you all. Yeah. You know, before, before I forget... I just wanted to say something. I just wanted to, there, there was an issue that I saw on the um, board of uh, estimates meeting. Before I forget, I, I got to get, I got to get this off my chest before yes, I sir. forget. Um, I was watching the board of estimates meeting and they had uh, the board of estimates meeting consist of um, the controller, uh, the mayor, and the city council president. And uh, let me back up a little bit. Last, last show, I had made a statement about the city council that the city council um, actually failed in being the checks and balances um, of the city um, after the arrest of the mayor um, and the issues that was brought forth from the, the citizens of Mount Vernon for two years. Um, and then now, now the arrest and the issues and the issues that were brought it was my opinion and I said this last week that the city council failed to correct the 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 loopholes or what was questionable about the city charter to make the city run more efficiently and more and and, and accountable when cuz when you see problems and when lawyers find loopholes to do things that are questionable it is up to the city council's job to review mm -hmm. 
and make the necessary changes so so it won't what well, it doesn't happen again and um i got a text from former councilman johanna edwards and basically he took it personal because he was defending himself and i said brother in the text i said i wasn't speaking on anybody personally i was talking at the body as a group because everybody's one vote everybody every city council member has one vote and in that process i was talking about the whole but since Johanna texted me, he had brought up the issue of the Civilian Complaint Review Board. Now, um, I played an advisory role in the Civilian Complaint Review Board. And so did Jeff Monroe, um, Anthony Mitchell, a lot of good brothers was on there. So the citizens of Mount Vernon will have a mechanism of oversight over the police when they have been violated in the in the complaint of the attorney general he did mention the issue of a campaign donor being appointed deputy police commissioner in this process which took almost two years to get the legislation the city legislation on on the CCRB to get approved which they did approve it but what was what was very interesting from from the meeting was that there was a budget uh, already aligned from my understanding of thirty thousand dollars for the CCRB but been watching the mayor discuss that there need to be more money and then the city council president agreeing that it needs to be more money when it doesn't have to have any more money to table moving forth with something that is oversight of a police department that even the AG has questioned, I think it's a dis. I think it's it's a disservice. The board of ethics that just did the report on the mayor didn't have a budget. They didn't have a budget. Thirty thousand dollars was just used to put up to have the website and certain information for the public, but no money, no more money is needed for that. From what I saw, it was another stale tactic by the mayor to keep this piece of oversight from functioning. Mm. Because once the money is moved, the city council is able to appoint those members to the CCRB. And then they have the power to investigate complaints. Oh, wait, maybe one of the complaints is, is the unqualified police commissioner and how he got there. See, mm. we don't know. But it's a stall tactic. Mm. And, 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 and I think the city council president did a disservice to the community at this point. Because really, at that point, you are taking an advice of someone who just has been arrested and someone who in the complaint it mentions the quick pro quo play to pay appointment of a deputy police commissioner when the CCRB's mission is for oversight policies and procedures training and actions of the police department and that's even the deputy police commissioner so I really think Lisa Copeland, at this point, has done a disservice to the community by tabling it when it really doesn't need a budget. It just needs people because if the Board of Ethics can, can investigate and do what they did and issue a report like they did, so can the CCRB without a budget. So, so it's for him to talk about he wants to put $100,000, see, here we go with this $100,000 again, right? Where is he going to get it from? He going to lie and say he got it from the money school again? Where is, where is it going to come from? $30,000 is sufficient to, to make this happen. So I hope the next Board of Estimate meeting, I hope that they'll put it back on the table. And um, let's not get into the shim-sham about it needs more money. No, it needs, to be put, it needs to be put in effect and allow these people to do their job. And, and that's what I got to say with that. Yes, sir. Any, anything, AJ, on that? No, I think you said it. So you said it well. Um, I'm going to be watching the situation. I'm, I've been, I've just been watching. I haven't spoke on a lot of things individually lately, but I've been watching everything because it got to a point where, you know, 
we were reporting every little thing going on in Mount Vernon. And it, people just, you know, it was just, it was just over. You were just giving out too much. So now I'm picking and choosing. But I'm watching that whole situation, though. And I, I, we will be doing something on it. And this is not attacking anybody. This is just mm-hmm. accountability. That's you know, right. if we can't be accountable of, of ourselves, you know, then, 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 then who's going to be who's going to be accountable? But people take it personal. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you you put yourself in that position. Well, you, you know, know, we we're in positions of leadership whether we like it or not mm-hmm. and we're under the microscope right right so we have to act accordingly you want to put yourself in a position as elected official and then you get mad when people question your authority you can't have a both you can't have a both way mm-hmm. because you work for the people well, you're you, there to receive a question right yeah <laughs> there you you're go the, you're, 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 and you there you and go. you're happy when we are holding others feet to the fire you know your adversaries and your foes and but it, then, then when you take that position you think you know the 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 player changed the game didn't change like I mean it's still now now we have to hold you watch you and hold you to the fight like you think it it shouldn't maintain to you <coughs> you right. know what I'm saying mm-hmm. and a lot of times and I'll say this again um, a lot of times people don't understand I don't attack the person whether it's Mayor Thomas or, or whoever a lot of times it's not attacking him I don't call him out of his name I don't call him out, I don't talk about his family I don't do a lot of that other stuff that they do. You know what I'm saying? But I deal with the issue. You know what I'm saying? That issue, what you did on that day was wrong. Mm-hmm. And then what right. you came out, and I was in the meeting, and what you came out and then told the people at the press conference was an outright lie, and I had to call you on it. You know what I'm saying? That's not call, That's not. That's nothing against you. You know what I'm saying? I'm mm-hmm. not. I'm not coming at you. You know what I'm saying? I respect your position you know, that you hold, and I, you know, I treat you that way. But you still have to. Well, whoever it is. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it, I attack the issue, not the person. A lot of times we're attacking the person. Yeah. You the Honorable Black Muhammad warned us, never attack people personally. Right. Only deal with them on program and position. Right. That's right. That's and, right. See, and see, what they'll do to me in return is then try to attack me personally. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what they do but, with everybody. But, but, but you never proven that anything I wrote was wrong. You never proven, you know. You write that you do the whole fake news thing, you know, like Trump or whatever. But you've never proven. You've never shown. Like I've given everybody that that we've discussed. Like people don't. Like I'll talk about Richard Thomas. I've had extensive conversations with him. He basically understands. I worked on his campaign. A lot of things I write about him. Reggie Lafayette. A lot of these people. Ernie Davis. I've told them to their face. I've had the conversations with them about it. There's no surprise. They still don't like that I feel that way. You know what I'm saying? But they know. And when I write these stories, I send them a copy. And I ask them, you know, try to get a quote from them. Some of them don't want to do that. Well, if you're not going to put your side out there, then you can't get mad. You know what I'm saying? But this is, this is what we got to do. Because for too long, cities like Mount Vernon, and not just the black politicians, but especially the black politicians, have been counting on the voters and the residents being misinformed and uninformed. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? For for their gain. You know what I'm saying? They're not trying to register and go to the un, un, un you know the unregistered voters. All them people don't vote. We're not even going to talk to them. Talk about them or nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's just this pool of people here. That's all we got to deal with. Right. And I've had them tell me this. Right. It's you know like it's like replacing racist white people with black hate leadership. Mm. You understand? Because it's like I if if I need if if I needed to be hated by my my own people, I just go over with the KKK. You know, at least at least I know what they standing for. You know, and if you come into a and you come into a city and you're dealing with black folks and they hating you harder than 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 the white man. You know, and and I always say when when I come out my house, it's not the white man breaking in my car, right? It's not the white man pissing on my on my on my staircase. Mm-hmm. It's people that look like me. That's right. So if, if then we if we critical or oh, you hating. How am I hating when I go to White Plains and I would love Mount Vernon to look like White Plains. Right? I would love Mount to come out and not see cans and motor oil and and, 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 and all this stuff on the street when I'm spending good money in a building every month, my hard working money, and then go to a parking lot that's Broken down and, 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 and smell like all type of stuff. When are we, when, how do we get our self-respect to even say this is unacceptable? Well, when we stop giving in to myth over reality. 
I mean, the streets look clean in Wakanda. <laughs> but we got to wake up <laughs> to the reality of a real Wakanda. That's right, right. That's right. By making our communities a decent and safe place mm -hmm. to live. Right. Well. So we got to get out of myth and deal with reality. That was on the screen. But now we got to come now and we got to be those super men and women in our community that raises the level of consciousness. Look at the end of the movie, uh, Black Panther, mm -hmm. the way that they talk about it and have it recorded that, you know, at the end they were coming into the hood and the community right. dealing with the youth. That's right. Well, that's what we already are striving to do right that's now. Right. So mm -hmm. wake up to the reality right. of life and not just like to see it on the screen. Right, right. See, we see strong black women, they say that, is there in the movie. Well, that's good. Strong black men in the movie, and they went at each other and, you know, fighting for who was going to be the king or this, that, and the other. But whatever the case may be, transfer that to reality. Now, we don't right. need to be fighting each other. We don't that's need right. to be plotting. Right. Because the brother had an issue against the other brother. But the bottom line is both of them had an issue, issue. With the way their nation was right, being right. run Absolutely. and operated, right. you understand right. what I'm saying? Right. Well, we have an a, 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 a issue with the way our nation is being run and operated. Right. So then we got to be agents of change right. and Absolutely. not complain. We right. got to be solution oriented. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan always taught me this principle: there will always be problems in organizational leadership mm. and structures. He says, but the beautiful thing is, there's a solution for every problem. Absolutely. That is what we need to understand. Absolutely. Welcome, Brother Arthur Muhammad. He's tuned in. Um, Sean L. Montgomery, Wayne Robinson, Yasmin Hurston. Brian Sillo said, beautifully said, brother. Eddie Johnson said, keep speaking truth. Truth will stand. And um, Sean Montgomery gave me a shout out. Indeed. All all. I want to announce something here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, on April, Saturday, April the 7th, the MGT and GCC vanguard of Muhammad Monster number seven. The Real Sisters of Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> represents a program called Sisters United Empowerment Seminar. And it's a free seminar for young girls and women ages 16 to 30. And um, there will be an official launch for the event, Vanguard Cares. There's registration, which includes workshops, light refreshments, swag bags.